Recent days have seen Europe take new steps toward the commercial production of green steel, steel that's essentially carbon neutral in production and transport. On Friday, the auto supply company ZF out of Germany struck a major deal with hydrogen producer H2 to supply green steel in the coming years. On the same day, the steelmaker ThyssenKrupp rolled out its hydrogen production arm called Nucera to public investors who promptly put a 2.5 billion euro valuation on the company. Now, the message seems to be clear. There's a lot of anticipation around green steel. But the market is still young and there are plenty of questions before production begins on a commercial level. Now we'll talk to an expert about that in just a moment. But first, here's an example of how green steel is produced. This steel mill is located right by the Baltic Sea in northern Sweden. It's the world's first successful pilot project for steel production using climate neutral hydrogen. The intermediate material for steel production is stored in this hall in the form of small pellets obtained from the raw product iron ore. A rotary kiln is then used to refine the iron ore rock. The next step is to increase the iron content of the pellets. This involves them being heated with hydrogen and then melted down. So what we're doing here is, is testing a technology that is aimed to replace the blast furnace. And the blast furnace uses coal instead of what we do here with hydrogen to um, refine the iron ore into iron. We weren't allowed to film the process as it's an industry secret. But here's how it works. First up is producing green hydrogen. Electricity from renewable sources, like wind or solar power, is used to split water via electrolysis. The end products, oxygen and climate neutral hydrogen, or H2. This is then fed into the hybrid blast furnace and used to further increase the iron content of the pig iron pellets. In a second stage, liquid steel is then produced in the electric arc furnace. The process is being hailed as a breakthrough that will usher in a new era in industrial history. You get a bit blind after a while um, while working with this all the time, but when you take one step back and think about it, it's it's quite astonishing what has been achieved here in just a couple of years. At the SSAB steel mill, they want to completely replace the old technology, which requires a lot of coal. Everything will be powered with green electricity in the future, all the furnaces and a new rolling mill. The green steel is set to get the green light in a couple of years. The new technology saves a lot of CO2 and is much more efficient. We say that from starting to melt the scrap or the sponge iron in an electric arc oven until we have a finished a coil that we could actually send to a customer, it's roughly three hours. Right now, the overall manufacturing process still lasts several days. But with green steel also meaning lower costs, demand is sure to grow. Nicole Fuchta is a managing director and partner at Boston Consulting Group. She joins me for more. Nicole, welcome to the show. I want to begin with ZF. Um, and this deal, is this the beginning of a long-term trend that parts manufacturers, in this case for the automobile industry, are going to need to commit to green steel production in order to meet their own goals? Yes, sure. And, you know, the good thing is that the European steel industry is on its way to deliver um, for those parts manufacturers. So all steel players have concrete plans how to decarbonize it. And if all announcements materialize, then roughly 40% of the European blast furnace capacity will be converted, so replaced by greener steel, or you know, um, new plans will come online like the one you quoted in the Nordics. You've written about this idea of a green steel premium. That is that there is going to be much higher demand initially for green steel than there will be production. Even with that premium in place, isn't green steel, the production is going to be so much more expensive. How are firms going to overcome that gap? Are we seeing plans working with governments, for example, to overcome that gap? Yeah, I mean, generally, you need to say that in 2030, and that's the year we are talking about, steel will be in generally more expensive regardless of the color 
I mean, the uh, green part, which you are talking about, the flat steel will be about 70%, so 70 more expensive than today's gray steel. However, gray steel will be also more expensive you know, given the carbon price, which will be charged in uh, 2030. So, but however, to put this into perspective, yeah, if you just look at a standard car to decarbonize the value chain, it's about 2% more expensive. This would mean for the steel embedded in a car, it's 250 to 300 euros. And I mean, this is not so much. Plus, mm. you know, first assessments of the end consumer sentiment say there is a willingness to pay for net zero cars. So this makes me hopeful that it will work. At the same time, aren't we hearing companies say that to make these long term investments in things like electrolyzers, that they're going to need some government help? And here in Germany, for example, I know that there's been a lot of complaints that they haven't seen a clear roadmap towards that help. Yeah, we certainly, or the steel industry certainly needs help, and this comes in different forms and shapes. So if you want to replace a ton of old capacity and new capacity, you need to spend uh, roughly a thousand euros per ton. So and how does it come? This The balance sheet of the steel players do not have the strength, so we need CapEx support. But also what you are mentioning is, you know, the infrastructure, the renewables, the H2 component. So we need to have this set up ready so that the steel industry can can produce and then the ZFs of this world can start buying greener steel, yes. All right, those CapEx expenses, of course, meaning uh, capital expenditures. Um, I want to ask, do we even really have a definition for green steel at this point? Isn't that one of the, uh, the tricky points? Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, how is green defined? I mean, the less carbon embedded in the production, the greener the material is. And I don't care so much about, you know, what shades of green are we having. So I would argue the greenest sort of steel is about four or less than 400 kilograms per, CO2, uh, per ton of steel embedded. And um, we don't have this yet. You need to have full green um, hydrogen powered plant for that, but everything which is below 1,500 kilograms of CO2 per ton starts getting green. Um, so this is a trajectory, but we need you know, to come close to around 400 kilograms. Mm. And briefly, do companies even have the means to track those carbon emissions across their entire value chains? Well, this is not that easy. Yeah? First have um, started and made announcements as they can. So you need to calculate a product carbon footprint, ideally real time, not an average over a year. And only if you have this as a prerequisite, um, then of course you can achieve the premium we talked earlier about. All right, Nicole Vogt is a managing director and partner at Boston Consulting Group, specializing in metals. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.